uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus, uh, getting clues from its name, we get big ventricles, but CSF pressure is normal. It can be idiopathic, or we not, we're not sure what the reason is, or secondary if we know what's causing it. It can be from, for example, subarachnoid hemorrhage, history of traumatic brain injury or meningitis. And in these cases, um, there could be fibrosis of the arachnoid granulation, which is the point of absorption of, or absorption of the CSF. Same thing if you have blood products in the CSF. Um, it can also block the arachnoid granulations. It's important to diagnose or make this diagnosis because uh, patient with Patients with normal pressure hydrocephalus can undergo shunting and their symptoms for dementia may be potentially be reversed. Okay. So how did how did this happen? Why is it that it's kinda weird that you have big ventricles but normal pressure? Uh, to understand this, let's go back to some of the theories. The theory for creation of um, the balance between in the CSF flow is a balance between production and absorption. Where, where the absorption occurs here at the level of the arachnoid villi. A third concept that we have to understand is the concept of the perivascular space. So going back to our anatomy, this is your arachnoid matter. This is your subarachnoid space. And the subarach in the ar subarachnoid space, you have blood vessels traversing to that area, including small blood vessels which penetrate the parenchyma, bringing along with it a portion of the pia matter. So, initially, um, the inciting factor for developing normal pressure hydrocephalus is an initial decrease of absorption of the CSF for some reason, decreased absorption. When you have decreased absorption, you get increased volume of the fluid. Increased volume. But the body will compensate by enlarging the ventricles. If you also enlarge the ventricles, enlarge the volume, the increase in volume will not bring a higher pressure. Hence, you just have a normal pressure, a new normal, new normal uh, steady state. Now in this state, when you have a new normal of the steady state, the CSF flow here will be affected by um, pulsations, by the cardiac pulsations. So some of the pressure here in the um, cisterns or in the subarachnoid space is transmitted there into those arteries or um, to those tiny vessels which penetrate the um, parenchyma called the perivascular space and this is the perivascular space it's, it's, it's already contacting the brain matter so that tissue gets compressed and when you have tissue compression there is impaired uh, impaired impaired drainage of the waste material in the tissue. And that's one of the theories for um, developing dementia. So for our purposes, we're going to review the three main, uh, three main findings according to our source here. 
So first is a ventricular dilatation which is out of proportion to the degree of atrophy. So you have here a patient with um, prominent soci and extraatial spaces, but the degree of ventricular dilatation is too much compared to that. So just to make it a bit quantitative or objective, um, Evans index is uh, recommended by our other source. And you get the Evans index by taking an actual slice through the frontal horns. And you measure it from one frontal horn to the other. and getting a ratio or dividing it with the weakest dimension of the brain from inner table to the other inner table. So when you have a big dimension here and you get the ratio of more than 0.3, um, it's already suggestive that there is too much ventricular dilatation. Second uh, imaging sign is the presence of periventricular halo, which is a sign that blood within the ventricle, uh, blood, I'm sorry, a CSF within the ventricle is already, some of it is um, flowing centrifugally towards the periventricular region, hence the hyperintense signal in the periventricular white matter. Third is the hyperdynamic flow in the aqueduct. So here is a sagittal uh, T1 sequence. You can see T1 weighted sequence. You can see that the lateral ventricle, the third ventricle are enlarged but your fourth ventricle is normal. Therefore, there must be something wrong with the hemodynamics here in the aqueduct of Silvius. In this example, uh, we got here a little bit of a prominent um, aqueduct of Silvius. And then when we do the phase contrast MRI, which is a study to check the CSF flow, um, we get an abnormal uh, flow void, which denotes that there is an increased velocity or flow at this region. So that attests to the abnormal hemodynamics. So those are uh, the findings for normal pressure hydrocephalus. Um, important to recall uh, to understand that there is a new there's this concept of the perivascular space and the cascade which leads to these three important MRI 